study strategy over the years and achieve the spirit of the warrior. Today is a victory over yourself of yesterday. Tomorrow is your victory over lesser men. There is a student mentality in all of us that must be tapped into. A student is resilient. A student is disciplined. It is only through discipline that you will experience the freedom of a warrior. A student never surrenders. See, the strategy is the plan. The strategy, the game plan, the plan of action, the recipe, the how must be studied before the first step is taken. I am convinced that so many of us lose because of what we were not willing to study. We must grow a discipline to deliberately investigate what we are getting ready to enter into. We must be calculated as we enter into new seasons, into new relationships. This is the road to becoming a warrior. An experienced, skilled, and calculated soldier. A fighter, a game changer. Somebody who refuses to stay down. This is somebody who is set apart from those who operate in the realm of normalcy. This is somebody who is above and beyond. We got a bit of a work ethic to go after it. A student is a disciple, and a disciple is disciplined. Discipline to achieve the spirit of the warrior. They are perfectly positioned for victory daily. Discipline is an invitation out of normalcy. A man who studies is a man who is allergic to average. So you are a warrior and you don't even know it. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. After today, everything is about to change. Because change starts with you. To understand this is to know the difference between men and lions. You must understand that there is more than one path to the top of the mountain. And in this very moment, all you have is all you need. See, somebody lied to you and told you that life is about acquiring more to move forward. And what if I told you that getting to the top of the mountain was not about acquiring more, but about becoming more? That if you can become, then you will find your authentic path to the top. Everybody wants to go to the top, but nobody wants to discover new ways to climb there. Find your authenticity. Discover your identity. We're all told, if you want to get to the top, follow the leader. But that is a broken mentality. Yes, leaders are necessary, but we must be fully aware when we have been called to lead, to blaze our own trail, to discover a new way. It's daunting, it's exhausting to get to the top. But there is more than one way, and you will discover that way by not acquiring. So it is not the more that you get, the faster you will go. It is the more you become, the quicker you will elevate. And so getting to the top of the mountain has more to do with becoming than acquiring. What is your mountain? What is your trial? Who is the giant standing in front of you? Name it and defeat it. The climb is just as important as the arrival. The top is the end game, but the process is what will make you. Think lightly of yourself and deeply of this world. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone, at the end of your ego and your insecurities 
When you come to the end of yourself and the beginning of the understanding of our world, why we are here and what is our purpose, then all of a sudden everything changes. Think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. The world is vast. Over 7.5 billion people walk the face of this planet. There is so much here. Creation, the antelope, the trees, the mountains, the stars, people from every nation in every tongue. We have economy, we have industry, we have technology. We are more advanced than ever before. So take a moment and agree never to self-sabotage yourself. No more self-condemnation that you cease to see the opportunities in this world. How beautiful our planet is. To think lightly of yourself and deeply of this world is an invitation out of your ego, out of your insecurities, out of what you think you cannot do. It is to look beyond your program. It is to think of your legacy. It is to think of what you will leave behind. It is to think of your contribution and your impact. Even in this moment, in the midst of trial, in the midst of tribulation, ask yourself the question, what can I contribute? You see, conflict is necessary. Trial is, is needed. It causes us to create, to be proactive, to be inventive. It moves us to become pioneers. What type of mark will you leave in the earth? What will be your legacy? Man has always been haunted by the vastness of eternity. And so we ask ourselves, when we are long gone, will our names remain? A man cannot understand the art he is studying if he only looks for the end result without taking the time to delve deeply into the reasoning of the study. Everything that you do, you need to ask yourself the question, why am I doing what I'm doing? See, everybody wants a ring, but nobody wants to practice. Practice makes progress. Practice brings us closer to the ring. Every time you get in that gym, every time you step on that field, every single moment that you study your craft and you become a master, you move from the mundane, from the average to mastery. Mastery is an obsession. Those who are obsessed with the process of becoming are the ones who become. See, a lot of people, they want that gold, they want that ring, but they don't want to put that work in. And in order to achieve, I must understand that I must study. I must study to move from average to mastery. It's the daily battle, it's the daily grind that prepares us and equips us to win the war. Why do you do what you do? Why do you want what you want? The question is why? Have you delved deeply into the reason why you do what you do? I need you to take a moment and garner up all the belief that you have left in yourself and in the idea of what is possible to make this thing happen. The process is muddy. The process is murky. The process is dark. The process is cold. The process is going to leave you in places where you're going to feel like you have been abandoned, like nobody believes in you, nobody supports you. What is your why? Because if your why is powerful enough, then you can persevere through the process. What is it? Find it. 
When you don't see a light at the end of your tunnel, you gotta remember the light that is burning inside of you that nobody is able to put out. There is not a person on this planet that can stop you. It is a possibility that you are only doing what you are doing because somebody told you to do it. You are only studying what you are studying. You are only becoming what you are becoming because somebody told you to become it. Why are you doing what you are doing? And that why is going to come from a pure place, a pure, authentic, unadulterated place. Resentment and compliant are appropriate neither for oneself nor others. See, resentment is a complex and multi-layered emotion that has been described as a mixture of disappointment, disgust, anger, fear, bitterness. When life hurts you, when people betray you, your greatest response, love, forgiveness. You must never be bitter. Your responsibility is to get better. See, every trial loves a good triumph. And so you've got to work your bounce back muscle. You have no regrets because you make the right decisions. You are a calculated conversationalist. And compliant is to agree excessively to be a yes man or a yes woman. See, life isn't just about learning, but it's about unlearning. To be compliant would be to be programmed, to be hypnotized by the affairs of this life, to be suggestible that anytime anyone says anything, you believe it and you receive it. And the question must be, what is your reality? Both in fighting and in everyday life, you should be determined, though calm. Meet the situation without tenseness, yet not recklessly. And this is an invitation into a lifestyle of balance. You gotta know when to talk. You gotta know when to be quiet. You gotta know when to learn, and you've got to know when to unlearn. You need to know when to be angry, but not bitter. We must be anxious for nothing, but to be deliberately calculated. Step into the mastery of keeping a cool head in a hot situation. You may want to go off right now. You may want to lose your mind, but it is imperative and extremely critical that you keep a cool head and be anxious for nothing. We must master the art of calm. To be calm is to be absent from violence. To show no feeling of nervousness, no anger, no strong emotion. To be calm is to be confident. To be calm is to be certain. You may be in the worst fight, battle, and war you've ever seen. But you must be confident that you're coming out on the other side. Calm, cool, and collected. So take a moment. Begun, you will finish. No matter the fight, the test, the battle, the life circumstance, you will meet every situation calm, cool, and collected. You got this. The truth is not what you want it to be, it is what it is, and you must bend. To its power or live a lie. Everybody wants the future, but nobody wants to accept their current reality. See, truth is not what you want it to be. It is what it is, and you must bend to its power or live a lie. See, so many people keep telling themselves it didn't happen, but it did. And it hurt you, but it built you. It made you into something you would have never become had it not happened. One of the reasons why people can't grow, they cannot evolve, they cannot even enlarge their territory, they cannot shift their thinking, is because they are in denial. 
denial of this truth will cause destiny to avoid you. See, one thing I can tell you is that those who are in denial of who they are and where they are, destiny will avoid them. It is an invitation into obscurity, into darkness. That is the lie that we want to live. Uh, a lot of us are generationally programmed to live a lie. Your parents lived a lie and their parents lived a lie. And so you live the lie and you believe the lie and you get the results of the lie. See, the lie is like a bitter seed that has been planted in a garden and you have eaten forbidden fruit. And your bloodline has eaten from the forbidden fruit for decades. And see, the truth is the truth. And you must bend to its power or live a lie. Nobody wants to bend. But there is beauty. There is brilliance in bending and yielding in surrendering. And you cannot bend without humility. You've got to break out of self-denial. I gotta put down my ego. I have to put down my insecurities. I have to put down my pride. And I have to yield. I have to surrender. I have to let go of what was for what is. This is the reality. And the moment that I accept reality, all of a sudden, everything changes. When we accept the truth, and we bend to its power, and we step out of lying into living. This is freedom. The man who lives a lie is the man who is his own prisoner. The truth will set you free. Nothing more. The truth will set you free. Nothing more. I choose to live by choice and not by chance. I choose to make changes and not excuses. I choose motivation over manipulation. I choose to excel and not compete. I choose self-esteem over self-pity. I choose to listen to the voice from within versus the voices from without. I choose to fulfill my destiny. I choose to get the job done. I choose to finish what I started. No fear, no hesitation, no surprise, no doubt. Free yourself from the debilitating disease of fear. It has manipulated you long enough. It has tranquilized your faith. The fear of inadequacy, the fear of uncertainty, the fear of failure, the fear of not finishing, the fear of rejection, the fear of missing out, the fear of change, the fear of losing control. The fear of being judged, the fear of not being liked, the fear of something bad or traumatic happening, the fear of getting hurt. Many of these fears have left us in a state of paralysis, unable to move forward, unable to achieve. The time is now. Once you conquer fear with faith and love, there will be no hesitation. There will be no surprises, and there will be no doubt. In the face of adversity, you will be certain that in the end, you will. Anyone can give up. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. But to hold it together, when everyone else would understand if you fell apart, that is true strength. If you're going to stay in it, if you're going to win this fight, if you're going to overcome this enemy, against all odds, you're going to have to believe. You're going to need courage 
You're going to need grit. You're going to need faith. Your courage must exceed the common sense of man. No man is free who cannot discipline himself. You will never have your destiny. You will never be able to afford your future unless you are disciplined. If you're going to fulfill your purpose, you will suffer the pain of persecution. Not everyone will understand why you are staying in the fight. But if your vision is locked in, you will attain that which you seek. To win any battle, you must fight as if you are already dead. Our lives are so short. There is no time to waste. The approach to combat and everyday life should be the same. We lose in life because we fail to take it seriously. We think it is a game when in reality it is warfare. And you will either suffer the pain of regret or the pain of discipline. When a soldier enters into battle, a soldier is focused, disciplined, innovative, creative, and purposeful. If we will approach our everyday lives like a trained and dedicated soldier approaches battle, we will win and not just exist. Everything you do must have meaning. You must focus and practice discipline in every moment for every task. You must discipline your thinking. You must discipline your conversation. You must establish your goals and accomplish them. You must use strategy to create the best outcomes. Every thought, every word, every action has a specific purpose. You must master the day. You must approach your life like a trained and skilled soldier approaches warfare. Life is not a game. This will not be easy, but in the end, you will win. Fight like a dead man, like you're dead to your insecurities, like you're dead to your vulnerabilities, like you're dead to the pain of the past. Fight like a dead man. When a man fights like he's already dead, he's desperate, he's dangerous, he's disciplined. Fight for your life. Claw your way into your future. Fight for your goal. Give it everything you have because you have nothing to lose. To have an underdog mentality. Like everybody's already counted you out. Like everybody's already told you, you don't have what it takes. You don't measure up. That what you started, you will not finish. When you fight as if you are already dead, you are without restraint. You are a disruptor. You break all the rules because you have nothing to lose. You are desperate for resurrection and you will do anything that is required to accomplish the goal you are setting out to achieve. I choose to live by choice, not by chance. I live life by design and not by default. I am conscious. I am aware. I have been awakened. I am disciplined. I am detailed. I am meticulous. I am articulate. I am aggressive and intentional and assertive. I design my life. I refuse to whine and whimper over lemons. When life throws me lemons, I build a lemonade stand. I will learn from my mistakes. Every day, I live my life 
by design and not by default. Every day my passion is reignited. Success is my obsession. I establish my boundaries. I pray and meditate. I speak my desires boldly. I choose to make changes and not excuses. I choose motivation over manipulation. I choose to excel and not compete. I choose self-esteem over self-pity. I choose to listen to the voice from within versus the voices from without. I choose to fulfill my destiny. I choose to get the job done. I choose to finish what I started.